Hello everybody and welcome to Weld Fever. On today's episode we're going to take a viewer request and I'm going to show you how to MIG weld thick material aka structural MIG welding. So stick with me, here we go. Okay before we get started today I have a little announcement to make and that is that the official Weld Fever logo caps are now in and available for sale on weldfever.com. Uh, these caps are fully embroidered. They're a black cap with a uh, one size fits most adult size with a hook and loop uh, adjustment on the back. They're a nice quality cap and more importantly the fully embroidered uh, logo here is really a special touch. I'm real happy with them. I hope you will be too. Um, hopefully you'll support us here at Weld Fever. It does take a little bit of uh, operating uh, money to get keep this thing going in terms of buying material and whatnot. So hopefully you guys will see this as a way to support the channel uh, and also to get some cool gear too. Uh, we could use the help so we can keep going on this thing and uh, create a better and better show as we go on. So be sure to support us at weldfever.com store icon at the very top of the web page and uh, you'll see that we've kept this uh, pretty low price compared to other logo type caps. So anyway, hope you order one. Okay, so today we're going to talk about structural MIG welding. And the reason we're on this topic today is that I received an email or a message from one of my viewers asking if I could explain how exactly and demonstrate how exactly to weld thicker material. Now, I can understand where this question comes from because there's a lot of bit, a little bit of a confusion when it comes to welding thicker material with the MIG process. So, in order to explain this a little bit, I got I think I have to talk about the four common modes of transfer in MIG welding, and they are short circuit, spray transfer, globular transfer, and pulsed MIG. These four methods are the most common methods of transfer when it comes to the MIG process. Now, what we use commonly, probably the most common, is the short circuit transfer process in which basically when the uh, electrode, the wire in this case, hits the metal surface, it causes a short circuit. And that short circuit causes an arc, which in turn causes the uh, process of melting the filler metal and the base metal creating fusion, fusion thus giving us a weld. That's the way that process works. The other processes work in a slightly different manner and usually result in a much higher penetration weld. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the short circuit process is probably the coolest of the four processes that we're discussing. In other words, it has the least amount of penetration compared to the other processes. What The benefit of the short circuit process is that it's possible in all positions. Unlike the other processes, which some of which are only possible in the flat and horizontal position. So then where does the confusion lie in terms of uh, how thick you can actually weld something with MIG? Well, this may be part of it. Okay, for those of you out there with MIG machines, you might be familiar with this chart. This chart is usually located under the lid uh, where you would feed the wire, uh, install a spool of wire for the machine. And this chart has all kinds of information in terms of the type of uh, wire that you use versus the thickness of the material that you'll be welding. And it basically tells you how to dial in your machine. Now, this particular machine goes up to 210-ish amps and if you notice over here it's a dual voltage so it has the capability of running under 120 volts and also under 230 volts and if you take the chart over here to the thickness you'll notice here at the very end I don't know if you can see that or not but it's telling me that the thickest uh, material I can weld is 3 eighths of an inch this would be at 230 volts uh, at roughly around 210 amps. And so most people right there assume that, well, that's the end of it. I can weld up to 3 eighths of an inch, but if I need to weld a half inch or 3 quarters of an inch or anything like that, I'm, I'm out of luck. Nothing I can do. Well, I think the big revelation for some people in this video is going to be that this is actually not an indication of the maximum thickness that you can weld. Rather, it is an indication 
of the maximum thickness you can weld in a single pass. I'll say it again. The maximum thickness you can weld in a single pass. In other words, if you need to weld thicker than 3 eighths of an inch, all you do is take it on in more than one pass or in multiple passes. Okay, so let's assume for the sake of argument then that we have a half inch piece of material and I happen to have some some scrap half inch material here. Let's assume that this half inch material, we want to go ahead and we want to join this together on a butt joint. You know, we want to join it like so. How are we going to accomplish this? Well, you might think, okay, well you got to gap it so you can get all the way through. Well, that's partially correct, but I want to mention that as we're looking at these beveled edges here that there really are four very distinct things that you need to do here in order to make sure you have a successful weld of thicker material using the MIG process. Number one, if you're going to use plate that is three-eighths of an inch or thicker, uh, you need to probably think about preheating and definitely pre-cleaning your material. Uh, you want to preheat your material to somewhere around 150 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That way you're sure to know the metal is good and hot and ready to receive a weld, which will make penetration easier. Also, uh, pre-cleaning means removing the mill scale. Number three, you want to use the proper sh shielding gas. 75-25 uh, argon CO2 mix is usually what most people use for MIG and it's very successful. But there are other uh, combinations out there. Uh, first of all, there's 100% CO2 that some people like to use. I will say that does burn hotter and usually allows for more penetration. The next thing you want to uh, talk about or, or you want to make sure is that you're properly trained. That you're a good enough welder to recognize what good fusion is, that you know what your machine should sound like. Honestly, if you're not that experienced in MIG welding, if you're having difficulty figuring it out, I would say that probably it would be best to do use some other process, probably a stick process for thicker material until you get yourself up to speed because if not it's a 50-50 proposition when it comes to welding thick uh, material particularly with MIG, the MIG process particularly if you're not well trained uh, and usually the problem is lack of fusion you'll end up with the edges that aren't fused properly I've seen it many many times under bend test scenarios where people uh, do actual complete tests test plates uh, they're cut out coupons are cut out they're bend tested and they split right in two just because there was a lack of fusion on one edge or the other so very very important to have all that down okay to demonstrate this uh, multi-pass uh, MIG welding technique I'm gonna go ahead and use the tried and true uh, cruciform here and uh, I've sped this up a little bit just because it gets a little bit long and monotonous otherwise but uh, you can see here that uh, as I began my weld I'm uh, going ahead and I'm running this thing with a little bit of a side-to-side -side motion. The reason for this is because on the root pass we have two edges, or should, I should say two sides, that we have to deal with. And we really want to make sure that we have good penetration and good fusion on each side of the plate. Um, that's probably the most critical uh, part of this exercise here. In addition to uh, having a very low stick out. Now you can notice in this that the uh, MIG gun nozzle is hitting the plate on both sides. I've got it jammed in there as far as I possibly can. And uh, now we're coming up to the termination of the weld. Okay, here's the finished weld and I just want to point out that uh, I had mentioned that it's important to try to preheat and also to clean mill scale off of a weld or off of the plates before you do your weld. In the interest of time and filming this video, I did neither, and as a result, the weld did go in a little cold. So I definitely, again, urge you to preheat and to clean mill scale off of your weld. Okay, so now here goes our uh, second pass into this plate, and uh, by now, our uh, plate is nice and preheated as a result of the first pass, and this weld goes in a lot better than the first one. The result is much better as it should be. Still should have probably cleaned the mill scale out but uh, again in the interest of time and filming this video we just uh, went ahead and did it for example purposes only. Okay here's a quick shot of the second pass and as you can see as a result of the plate being a uh, little bit heated up uh, prior to this one 
the, the, the pass went in a heck of a lot better than the first one, and there's really good fusion along the edges and along the side of the other weld as well. Okay, so this time uh, we went ahead and completed this weld without the lens, uh, just to get a better view of it if we could. Speeded this up uh, to about 400%. Uh, but still you can see the, uh, the rocking side-to-side -side motion uh, in order to get good fusion on the sides and good fusion in the weld ahead of it. Here's the completed weld. Now that it's cleaned up here, you can get a quick shot of it. And you can see that as the plate gets hotter and hotter, the weld goes in better and better. It's uh, nice and flat and very well fused in. So uh, the warmer the plate gets, the better the result. That's why preheating is key and very, very helpful. Here we go with another uh, pass here, and uh, as you can see, this one also went in very successfully. They're looking better every time. And uh, yeah, I just keep doing this uh, until we get enough layers. Now I get a second pass uh, on the on this particular layer, and I believe we'll uh, be seeing a third pass as well, just to fill this uh, final layer up here. I think you're getting the idea that uh, the heat and the fusion is what we're looking for. We want to make it look uh, completely flat across and uh, try to make it look like it's one entire continuous weld as if though the welds kind of uh, meld into one another. Uh, that is a great indication of good fusion but if you have individual beads that are really separated from each other uh, that look kind of like a couple of worms laying next to each other uh, then you don't have entirely complete fusion uh, you really want to try to overlap those beads every time so that you get this nice flat profile like we're seeing here right now. So here it is, the uh, end result of our uh, MIG welding thick material. As you can see, we have a succession of beads that are laying next to each other and they're overlapping in such a way that uh, we have good fusion between them. Uh, except for the ripple pattern there, you might actually think that it's one big giant bead and that's kind of the idea in order to get good fusion. Hey, thanks a lot for joining me on this one. I hope to see you on the next one. Don't forget to order your official Weld Fever logo cap which is available at www.weldfever.com. And don't forget to like us and subscribe. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.